blend everything up. Where's the food processor? Oh, f I forgot to put this in. I don't have time for this. Why did I think this was a good idea to do it in three hours? Every year for the holidays, I make a huge 10 course feast. It takes like 20 hours to put together. It's amazing for everyone, except for me, of course, it's exhausting for me. And since 2020 has been, how shall I say this, an exhausting dumpster fire of a year, I figured we'll keep things easier and quicker this year. I'm going to attempt a five course gourmet holiday meal in just three hours. Have I ever made a five course meal in three hours? No. Am I confident I can get it done in three hours? Also, no. But am I committed to making this video against my better judgment? Yes. I am, so let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is slice two butternut squash in half. It's gonna be part of our main course. We'll stuff it with something really savory and delicious, but for now, we're just gonna roast them plain with olive oil, salt, and pepper. We're gonna scoop out the guts of the squash, also known as the seeds and the sticky icky stuff. Drizzle with a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil. Season with some salt, obviously. Gotta get some flavor in these guys, or these gals, whatever whatever you wanna call. And some black pepper. Alexa, set a timer for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, starting now. For dessert, we're gonna make my very easy but very delicious salted chocolate cream tart. And while the squash is baking, we will make the whole thing and pop it in the fridge for a couple hours to set. The crust of this tart is made with mostly dates, nuts, and cocoa powder, so it's kind of a health food. And the filling tastes like salted fudge, so it's just really, really delicious. And best of all, it is so easy to make, requires no baking, and literally anyone can put it together because that's how simple it is. I've got some almond butter here. It's gonna help hold things together. You could also use coconut oil, but I like the rich nuttiness from almond butter and almond butter dates and chocolate are very, very delicious together. We're also gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. Again, flavors that go really well with chocolate and some sea salt because this is a salted chocolate tart, so it's gonna have that perfect sweet salty balance. Now we're just gonna blend this all up until we have a sticky dough. The dough looks pretty much done. You wanna be able to squeeze it together with your fingers. This is actually very satisfying to do. It's like adult Play-Doh. You like you can make a little chocolate snowman out of this, but we're on a time crunch, so that's for a different day. And then you wanna just press the crust into the bottoms and up the sides of a fluted nine inch tart pan with a removable bottom. The great thing about this recipe and why I chose it for this menu is that this tart crust took like seven, maybe eight minutes to put together. It's a lot easier and quicker than pie crust, which I know is more traditional for the holidays, but three hours, that's what we're working with. The only annoying part is you do have to use the food processor again for the filling, so you do need to Give it a clean, but you don't need to do like a full scrub de scrub, you can just do water. I'm gonna set this in the freezer for 20 minutes to firm up, and in the meantime, we'll make the salted chocolate cream filling. What? Why is the fire alarm going off? <laughs> All right, looks like we're on schedule, so now I'm gonna chop up the chocolate for the filling. And we need some quality dark chocolate for this recipe since it is one of the main ingredients. This is like a 70-ish, 72, percent dark chocolate. I've also made this with an 85% dark chocolate if you want something really, really um, kind of grown up and classy. But if you've got kids at your holiday table, I would say maybe go easy on the dark chocolate like a 60%, but there are no kids in this house, so we're going with 72%. This recipe calls for canned coconut cream. We're looking for full fat canned coconut cream, not like the boxed coconut milk that has 45 calories in it that you put in your smoothies and oatmeal. That's fine for breakfast, but it's really not gonna do anything here. You want the real good full fat stuff. And the coconut cream, because it's so rich and luscious, is gonna make this taste like fudge. And the last ingredient we'll melt down is some coconut, coconut or coke. Coconut oil, let's open. Please open, I don't have any seconds to waste. Oh, yes, okay. I'm kind of winging things here right now because uh, I'm trying to finish in three hours. We've got our coconut cream, dark chocolate, and coconut oil in a saucepan. It's hanging out over medium low heat. Whisk it pretty frequently until it's beautifully melted. Back to the food processor. Back to the food process, back. How does this happen every time? Back to the food processor. For the filling, I'm going to add some medjool dates here, maybe like six or seven large ones. And this is going to give the filling more body as well as some sweetness. Also gonna add some vanilla. 
some sea salt because this is a salted chocolate tart. The salt is really gonna help balance the rich chocolate fudge. And now we're gonna pour our chocolate cream mixture in. That is pretty, pretty sexy. Okay, blend everything up. Where's the food processor? Oh, f I forgot to put this in. No! I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't have time for this. Learn and Splash is gonna be done soon. Why did I think this was a good idea to do it in three hours? It was not a good idea. I don't know if this will go in. Will it blend? Ugh. All right, we have to we have to just test it out. Let's see how it goes. Moment of truth. Let's turn on. All right, it seems to have worked. We'll scrape down. Oh my god, it smells so good. And because I know I'm gonna get at least one question about this, this tart does not taste like coconut. It tastes like sweet and salty dark chocolate fudge, which sounds delicious. I'm just gonna smooth out the filling with a spatula. I feel like even if all the other dishes aren't good, this is a real winner. It's worth it. And the last step is sprinkle some good flaky sea salt on top. This is Malden salt. It's so good with the richness and sweetness of the chocolate and the dates. So please don't skip this step. Pop this in the fridge for two hours until it's set. Now that our tart is in the fridge, we're gonna start on our sticky and creamy onion and lentil filling for the stuffed butternut squash. We're gonna dice up two large yellow onions and mince six cloves of garlic. Back to the butternut squash. It was in the oven for about 45 minutes. It's fork tender now. I'm gonna set it aside and we'll stuff it later. The easiest way to peel garlic is to use a heavy knife and smash down on the clove. It will easily release the skin that way and then you'll just slice off the nubby bit at the end. To save an extra minute or so, I'm also gonna slice up the garlic that we need to use for our Brussels sprouts later on. Now that the onions and garlic have been chopped, I'm going to cook the onions on the stove for about eight to nine minutes, medium high heat with some olive oil until they get nicely browned. And season with a little bit of salt, obviously season at every stage. Stage, that's my motto. I'm using a relatively high heat and not stirring the onions very frequently because I do want them to get some brown color on them. Kind of like me. Have you noticed my California suntan? Anyways, because that's gonna release a lot of flavor into the lentil mixture later on. So make sure you let your onions brown. The onions take about eight or nine minutes on the stove and they don't need to be stirred often. So I'm gonna use that time to do some extra prep. I'm going to chop up the fresh sage. Oh my God, it smells so good. The fresh rosemary, I measure out the tomato paste and vegetable broth and then in about eight or nine minutes, I'll add those to the stove. For the vegetable broth, I don't have any uh, carton vegetable broth and I certainly didn't have time to make my own, but this is the best flavored vegetable broth that I have tried. It's obviously not broth, it's just the seasoning powder. It's chicken flavored, but it's vegan, I promise. It adds a really savory, intense umami flavor to your soups and stews and things like this. For an everyday weeknight soup, I probably wouldn't use it, but when you're trying to impress your holiday guests, it definitely comes in handy. And I can't forget the red wine. It's going to infuse the whole dish with a really rich body. Just need a third of a cup and then a third of a cup for me. I don't know if this is actually a good idea while I'm trying to rush through cooking, but say la vie. The onions are nicely brown now, so I'm gonna add the minced garlic, chopped rosemary, and sage. Tomato paste. I feel like too often this is added into soups or chilies, just like bloop, just like a little bloop, bloop. And then you just add the rest of the liquid and you don't cook the tomato paste. That is fine if you want food that tastes fine. But if you want really excellent tasting food that's really flavorful, cook the tomato paste down for a few minutes. When you cook the tomato paste down, it's gonna have a more complex depth of flavor, more sweetness, and less acidity. Ooh! It smells so good. Rosemary, sage, red wine, garlic. And for the red wine, you wanna cook it for like three-ish minutes until the smell of alcohol is gone. So it's not gonna taste like alcohol. It's gonna taste full-bodied, developed, voluptuous, kind of like, not me, but you know, think of your favorite voluptuous woman. It's kind of like that. Once the red wine has soaked into the onions and is cooked down, we'll add the vegetable broth, the green lentils, some paprika, and a bay leaf. I brought the lentils to a boil and then reduced the heat and we're gonna maintain a rapid simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes. Doesn't really need any babysitting. So in the meantime, I will prep our Brussels sprouts and carrots. We're gonna have two vegetable side dishes. We're gonna do sweet chili ginger Brussels sprouts. So it's gonna be a little bit of a Chinese style Brussels sprouts, a little bit different, non-traditional. And then we're gonna do some simple roasted carrots and the reason I chose both of these recipes is because they cook at the same time and the same temperature in the oven. It's a very nice situation. You don't have to constantly check the pans and you don't have to fight for oven space at the holidays. So it's very convenient. These sprouts are on the, I would say, 
medium medium size but if you've got some big boys that are on the huskier side I would go ahead and quarter them because they'll take a long time to cook in the oven and if you've got the little and if you've got the little little, little, little babies if you've got some itty bitty babies you can probably just leave those whole cut off this dirty knob at the bottom. When you slice the Brussels sprouts, if there are any um, bruised layers on the outside, go ahead and remove that. And sometimes there'll be some layers that kind of just want to come off on their own. It feels natural to take them off. That's just nature's way of telling you that the Brussels sprout doesn't want to wear its jacket anymore. So take off the take off the Brussels sprout jacket. We're just gonna drizzle them with oil and season with salt and pepper. I want a more neutral flavor for the chili sauce, so I'm gonna use avocado oil. I'm roasting these really skinny carrots whole. They are skinny enough that you don't have to cut them, but if you can only find fat carrots, then I would go ahead and cut those in half and probably in quarters for really large ones. And this dish is gonna be really simple. We're just gonna roast the carrots in olive oil, salt and pepper, a little maple syrup, and then finish it off with an herby condiment. The proper way to do this would be to mix the salt and pepper and the the oil and the maple syrup in a bowl and then pour it on the carrots, but we are saving time. So we're just doing it quick and dirty. Not dirty though, I have washed the carrots to be clear. These probably need five more minutes. Oh, <laughs> 90 minute mark. So halfway done, I'm a little nervous. What have we done so far? We have stuffed our squash. No, we haven't stuffed our squash. We have roasted our butternut squash. We have made the, in oh, something's beeping. <laughs> Wonderful. We have made our entire dessert. It's just hanging out in the fridge. We have prepped our Brussels sprouts and carrots that we'll roast in a little bit. And our lentil filling is almost done. We're gonna finish it with a few ingredients and then we'll stuff it into our squash, which means I have to scoop out the squash flesh. The squash, the squash, the squash? The fill, the flesh of the squash. I have to scoop that out. How are you feeling about everything so far? Uh, pretty good. I feel like I am mostly on schedule, which is, probably because I drank two cups of coffee and I literally never drink coffee. So I've got lots of energy right now, which is which is helping me get through it. I'm scooping out the flesh of the squash because then we're gonna fill it with our creamy, sticky onion lentil filling. One option is to just use the squash a different day for something else. But if I have time, I don't know if I will. If I have time, I'm going to puree this into a sauce. That is my goal. We'll see if it happens. The lentils are al dente. And now I'm gonna add three, what I call vegan superstar ingredients to really jazz up the flavors in this dish. First, tahini, which is gonna bring a rich nuttiness and creamy texture. Next, light miso paste or white miso paste. It's gonna add a slight sweetness and a lot of intense umami flavors. And finally, a good quality balsamic vinegar. I say good quality because you really gotta use the good stuff here and it's gonna add a slight syrupy flavor, really sweet, rich notes that are gonna go well with the savory notes in this recipe. And some kosher salt to season. And we'll put this back on the stove just for like two minutes so all the flavors can mingle together. This is so good. It's got this unbelievable depth of flavor. It tastes like mushrooms meet some sort of meat sauce in red wine. It's incredible. Now we're gonna stuff it into the butternut squash and put that in the oven. What I love about this recipe is that we're treating the lentil mixture almost the same way an ordinary chef would treat meat. We're seasoning it very well. We've got a really savory broth, red wine, browned onions. And so the end result is gonna be so packed with umami, so flavorful that your guests are going to fall in love with it. We're gonna pop the stuffed squash in the oven for about 15 minutes. And in the meantime, we'll start on our salad. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. The capital of Kazakhstan is Nursul Tong. No Sultan, what? Kazakhstan population, 19 million. That's more than I thought. In general, I find a lot of holiday dishes can be too heavy and one note. So to brighten up the holiday table, I like to add a little bit of acidity into my dishes. So the champagne vinegar and sumac here, the balsamic vinegar in the lentils. With the Brussels sprouts, we'll add some rice vinegar. These acidic flavors are going to brighten and lighten your dishes and really balance them. It's still gonna be creamy comfort food if that's what you're going for, but it will taste a little fresher and a little brighter. First thing I wanna do is make our sumac marinated shallots. Sumac is a really lovely spice from the Middle East. It's earthy yet sweet, a little citrusy. It kind of replaces lemon juice in a lot of recipes and it adds a lot of flavor and it's gonna make these shallots really bright and fresh. You wanna slice the shallots as thinly as you can and then just break them up with your fingers and get them loose from the rings. I'm gonna quick marinate the shallots in champagne vinegar, sumac, and salt. We'll let the shallots marinate in this mixture for about 20 minutes and we'll assemble the rest of the salad. The salad that we're making is very simple but very classy at the same time. And that's why I chose it for this meal because it 
doesn't take very long. I'm shaving an English cucumber. I like to have the ribbons. It just feels a little more grown up than um, slicing them. Since cucumbers are really watery, I'm gently patting them dry with a paper towel so that the salad doesn't have too much moisture in it. To the shaved cucumber, we'll add three or four sliced scallions, about a cup of tender parsley leaves and stems, half cup of fresh mint leaves, and then we'll dress that with a little bit of lemon juice and extra virgin olive oil. When you're making something like this that has a lot of fresh ingredients and doesn't require a lot of cooking, you wanna use the best ingredients you can get, a good quality olive oil, the best produce you can find, and freshly cracked black pepper. The pre-ground stuff just doesn't cut it. It doesn't have the same sweetness and complexity of flavor that the freshly ground stuff has. So please use this. Just a little salt. Oh, Alexa, stop. That should be the stuffed squash. Oh, it's hot. It's heavy. Alexis, stop. I told you already, stop. Okay, stuffed squash is done. Looks nicely browned on the edges. I'm going to put it somewhere else for the time being and finish the salad. I've bumped up the heat in the oven to 425, so I'm gonna roast the Brussels sprouts and carrots. In the meantime, I'm gonna finish the salad and a couple other things. To give some crunch to the salad, I like to toss in some dry roasted almonds. So pretty. Look at this salad. Oh, hi. The salad is so pretty. I'm so proud of it. It's the prettiest salad. Got a deadline. You're right, we have a deadline. I have to go quicker. So, almonds, dry roasted almonds. Just gonna scatter them over the salad, just like that. Just like that. All right, I was moving a little too quickly. I was supposed to put the lettuce on top before the almonds, but it's fine. This is baby gem lettuce that I have sliced into quarters. I love it because it has this really nice crisp crunch to it. And so it's gonna be a nice contrast to the cucumbers, which are a bit softer. And then I'm just gonna kind of toss everything together, trying to be as gentle as possible. And now we're gonna get a nice pop of color from these sumac marinated shallots. I'm running a little behind, maybe I'm more than a little behind. I am sweating and I need to hydrate, but I'm just trying to get through all of this within the three hours. I don't know if I'll make it, but I'm going to try really, really hard. And right now the carrots and the Brussels sprouts are in the oven and I'm going to prep the ginger, garlic, and scallions for our Brussels sprouts and then make the gremolata for the carrots. Around the 15 minute mark, I gave those carrots a quick toss and then I did the same for the Brussels sprouts around the 20 minute mark. I'm just making the gremolata right now. It is so simple. All you need to do is chop up flat leaf parsley and then grate some garlic and lemon zest on top. Give a little sprinkle of sea salt or coarse sea salt and we are ready to go. I should really be hydrating right now, but my Brita filter is empty. I don't have time to fill it up. My red wine bottle is not empty, so cheers. The Brussels sprouts need about five more minutes. The carrots just got done. Mm. Ooh, that was pretty perfect. It's caramelized, it's sweet, it's tender. I'm going to make a very quick sweet chili sauce using five ingredients. All right, technically six ingredients because there's some water in this bowl, but we've got reduced sodium tamari, which is gluten-free soy sauce, agave nectar, sriracha, rice vinegar, and toasted sesame oil. Sprouts are out of the oven, so we're gonna finish them on the stove with our sweet chili sauce. I'm sauteing the garlic, ginger, and scallions in a little bit of oil, and once they are golden brown like they are now, I'm gonna pour in the sweet chili sauce. Now that the sauce is boiling, I'm gonna add in the cornstarch slurry. And we'll cook the sauce for just a couple minutes until it starts to thicken. And now I'm just gonna dump in the sprouts and just toss the sprouts in the sauce to coat. Finish with some toasted sesame seeds and the dark green scallion tops. All right, it looks like I'm going to finish about 15 minutes behind schedule, which not ideal, but also for a holiday meal, not that bad either. Usually at this point, if I'm running behind, I tell my family, just have another glass of wine. Dinner will be ready soon. But I am gonna show you the last couple things. I'm gonna make the sauce for our butternut squash and unveil our dessert. The sauce is really simple to make. All you need to do is take about a cup of the roasted butternut squash. Then we're gonna add some tahini, extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper to season, whiz it up in the food processor and add enough water until you have a thick but pourable sauce. When it's time to serve the meal, I like to drizzle this sauce on top of the warmed stuffed squash and for a pop of color, finish with some chopped parsley. I like to finish this tart with some raspberries because the tartness so perfectly balances the richness of the chocolate cream. And let the tart sit at room temperature for like 10 to 15 minutes before serving. That was my five course gourmet holiday meal in three hours, three-ish hours. And if I were to do it again, I would probably just make the tart a day or two in advance. It's just as good when it's been sitting in the fridge and that way I can do the four courses in a more relaxed three hours and not 
rush as much as I had to, but I'm still really happy with how the meal turned out as a whole. We've got a really nice fresh and bright salad to start. We've got those really simple but flavorful carrots with the gremolata, the really spicy, sweet Brussels sprouts, that hearty umami packed main dish with the squash and lentils, and of course a show-stopping chocolate tart. I think you will love this menu and I can't wait to see your holiday tables this year. As for me, I'm gonna have another glass of wine and I'll see you in the next video.